Hello friends and assorted mammals, my name is C.D. Corrigan and I am the creator of Relict RPG. I just uploaded the newest, latest version of our character sheet. This is version 1.0. Uh, this is replacing the outgoing beta test level, kind of functional but kind of clunky old character sheet that we've been using for the past year or so. And I wanted to upload a new character creation video for you all who are kind of learning how the sheet works. I think you're going to find the process a lot smoother and more streamlined than it used to be. There's a lot less cross-referencing and kind of just kludginess from working out how the system needed to function. Uh, I'm quite happy with how it's turned out and I think you'll enjoy it as well. Uh, I will tell you that I go through this recording here. I just finished creating a character for this uh, this tutorial. Uh, takes about half an hour to create a character with me explaining like every single thing that I'm doing along the way and maybe more detail than necessary. Um, I will tell you that in the previous version of the character sheet that was still a little clunky, my play testers, once they got the hang of it and they'd done one or two, takes them five or 10 minutes to put a new character together without backstory and writing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I expect this to be the same and faster, depending on how much you like to take notes and do different things. Uh, so bear that in mind. Um, erring on the side of over explaining because I know we've got a lot of fantastic new players coming in from our Kickstarter, which funded in less than a day and is still going as I record this, uh, unlocking more stretch goals that are coming out and being pushed to all of our backers. Everyone's getting extra adventures as the higher that goes. Uh, really excited about how that's going. I have a terrible cold right now. So I'm really struggling through, but I wanted to get this out there in a timely manner because I know people are looking to use it ASAP. So without further ado, Roll the tape. What's up, everybody? So this is it. This is character sheet version 1.0. If you've been playing Relict with the playtesting and all those efforts for the past year, you know, we've been working through some iterations on this. Um, this is our official first version of like the official like full completed character sheet design. I'm very excited about it. If you're used to those older versions, you'll find the character creation process significantly streamlined on this as well as like keeping track of your different stats and perks and items and everything. And uh, if you're new to Relic, maybe you're coming from the Kickstarter or whatever, welcome. Uh, this I think you will find to be relatively straightforward as we work through it here. Um, we've put a lot of effort, I've put a lot of effort into making it that way. Um, so, but let's talk about how to build your first character in Relic. You got a lot of options, um, but we'll, we'll make this as painless as humanly possible. Uh, so, we're on the RelicRPG.com homepage right here. You'll see the latest news up at the top. Here's access to all of our rules and everything over here, different items and weapons and all sorts of other things. We're going to go first. This is our create a character step-by-step -step guide here. It's also in the drop-down up top. Uh, but the first thing we might want to do, and it's on there as well, is just go over to our downloads page and grab this top file right here. That's what you'll see over on my iPad right here. Now I'm going to do this on the iPad just for ease of recording. Normally I like to print these off and fill them in by hand. There will be a form version of it where you can type in and do kind of stuff like we did in the last version. Those just take a while to put together because Adobe is not the fastest tool on the planet and it's it's a pretty long effort. So that will be coming out soon, but for now we've got just the, the standard file works perfectly fine. These are optional or kind of supplementary files down here on this list. Uh, so the backpack and extra notes is just if you want to, if you're a big note taker or you're managing like the party stash or something, you want to print that off and have more sections to just keep jotting stuff down. You can add as many of these as you want to your little character uh, pages. Um, and then our crit and fate point page and our action and reaction quick reference page are just useful information to have around the table to like pass between players. Every single player doesn't need a copy of it. Usually, I mean, you can, so it's up to you. I'm not your boss, uh, but these are just kind of supplementary. They're also available on the website just as information. So like you don't have to have them on hand. They're in the rules and all that kind of stuff. But this character packet V1 right here is what we're working on today. This is how you create and manage your character. Now, um, okay, so we're back to the home page. Let's go to character creation step by step. Now, if you want a detailed breakdown as to like the nitty gritty rules of every single one of these and what they all mean, you can scroll through this page here and it explains every bullet point on our checklist uh, in a lot of detail. You don't actually need an enormous amount of that. It is mostly baked into the sheet now, just so by filling out the sheet, all of that kind of happens organically. 
Uh, but if you really want to know kind of the, the behind the scenes stuff, this is the page for you. For now, I'm just going to use this checklist at the top here to make sure I hit all of the steps and keep things pretty straightforward for us. Um, but even then, all of this stuff and the like subclass, the subheadings and everything is is built into the new sheet. That's the that's the whole idea. So first things first, this is a level one character. I'm going to go ahead and fill that in at the top there. Uh, let's name our character. I already have kind of a character in mind. And let's choose our species. There's a lot of them in Relict. We had more uh, well, pretty often. Uh, some of these have actually come from community suggestions on our Discord, so go check that out sometime. Um, I'm just thinking we've had a guy in, in games that I've run. We've had goblins, we've had gorgons, are quite a lot of fun. Uh, weirdly, not that many humans. <laughs> a couple. Um, but we've done orcs. What I haven't done is a mare yet. I have not personally played one anyways, so let's go ahead and do that. So the mare is a, like a mermaid type uh, species, so that should be fun. Um, and you can click on any of these and it'll take you to the, the species homepage where like lore and stuff will wind up going and explain things in more detail. But for now, uh, the at a glance page has all of the key mechanical stuff that we need. Uh, okay, so we picked mare. Um, I just did a dude, so let's, uh, I think, we'll do they, them on this one. That's just whatever your choice is. Um, personal size, let's see here, I'm sorry, uh, creature size, rather. Uh, size medium. Um, as you can see, some species offer different options, so like orcs can be medium or large. You just choose at creation what you want to be. Uh, they have different pros and cons for different things. Uh, but medium is pretty standard. Uh, ether, this is how your magic works, how your creature kind of, how your, how your character kind of interacts with the magic of the world. Uh, for the most part, this doesn't impact gameplay in most campaigns and most encounters, unless you are running into like magic canceling monsters and anti-magic fields and stuff, then it can come up and there's some different things. Uh, your GM can kind of cover all of that. It's in the core rules. Uh, but for now, it gives us a perk to either regeneration or capacity. As, as you can see on my sheet here, we're going to check off flow for the mare. That's going to add a buff to our regeneration. I'm going to come down here to my mana, regeneration, and add a pip in buffs there because we'll calculate all that in a few minutes. Um, by the way, no true reason why different species couldn't have one or the other. It's just simplest in the system to build them into species. But if in your world there's some specific reason, you know, it's really important to your campaign that you want to switch it or your character or whatever, that's fine. It's not really going to affect every, anything too much as long as you pick it at creation and uh, stick with it. Uh, now. My mare has a walking speed of 30 feet and a swimming speed of 60 feet. So 30 feet standard, 60 swim. And I do have dark vision of 60 feet. Lovely. Last thing, we're going to record our species feature here. Each species usually has one, maybe two. Uh, so the mare get aquatic and I'm going to come over here to features and perks this big open space here. Uh, when I first did character sheets, I had all of these in little boxes that, you know, corresponded with different classes and, and perks and this, that, and the other thing. Um, and I found that was actually confusing, especially for new players as they were constantly trying to find where things go and what box it's supposed to be in and da, da, da. Um, and most people just preferred to have a big open space where they could organize it themselves. So here we are. So I'll show you how I like to organize it. If you do it slightly differently, not a big deal. Um, I like to do it by species. And I'll go ahead and put the feature here. Um, so I can always come back to this page and reference it if I need the details, but we've already recorded the swimming speed. Uh, and this says uh, no penalty for using melee weapons underwater and I can breathe underwater, speak sense, and basically be underwater with no problem. So I'm just going to write no penalty underwater. And then if it becomes an issue 
in an encounter or something, I want to come back here and refer to the page specifically. I'll just go ahead and pull that up. This is just reminding me that I have it. Great. Okay, let's go back to our character creation guide. The next thing we want to get to do is choose two or three classes. Uh, in Relict, all of your characters are... You basically build your own class by combining classes that are built into the system to create a unique build for you. Um, you can do that by picking two in a generalist or three classes. The generalist gets some stat perks. The influence class, the, picking three classes obviously gives you access to another class's abilities. I'm going to go ahead and do a three class character, so I'm going to go ahead and scratch off generalist here. And let's choose our classes. This brings us to the character classes at a glance tab down here. Um, you'll notice on this page it does show classes that are not fully implemented yet. These are on the roadmap. They're coming out. A few of these might be out by the time you see this video. Uh, we add new classes uh, basically every month at this point. There's at least one or two. Um, and we're working through the list and our Discord community has suggested even more to be added based on like different archetypes they want to build. So that's been really great. Go check it out. Um, okay. I have an idea for what I want Psy to be here. Um, I do want to incorporate some Plague Doctor, because they're a lot of fun. So that was a martial class. You can see up at the top here, these are your martial sets. They use, you know, stamina and physical abilities and, and that kind of thing. Mage classes come next. These guys cast spells and do magic. Blood Mage is a new one that I would really like to play myself. And Necromancer just got out of testing as well, so let's go ahead and grab those two. I think that's going to be our set. Uh, if you keep going down here, you'll see hybrid classes do a little bit of magic, a little bit of stamina. These are kind of like, I don't know, your spell sword type classes. So Paladins are a great example of that. Um, okay, so I've picked our three. Now what I need to decide is which one is going to be my major class, which one is going to be my minor class, which one is going to be my influence class. Uh, basically, the way to think about this is like major class is what you're most specialized in. Uh, it's going to be where a lot of your level up choices are and using those abilities is going to be the easiest resource wise for you. Minor class is something you're kind of cross trained in, uh, but maybe not your like bread and butter. And then influence class is really like you got a knack for something. You've learned a couple of tricks, but it's not something you go to super regularly. So. I think for major class, and you can put these in any order you want and create a pretty different playing character based on doing that, but I want to do Necromancer. I think this is going to be fun. So let's do Necromancer. And let's go ahead and record all of these um, features here at the top. So the mage type class, boom, that's going to add plus two to our mana capacity. So go on down here, one, two. Um, let's go ahead and get the toughness is right here on the bottom. So that's a toughness of three. And our primary stats and secondary stats, fortitude and willpower. Fortitude and willpower. And our casting method is focus, which is just, you know, how they use spells. So like somatic is they wave their arms around, verbal is they say magic words, focus is they have a wand or something. Um, and I can decide what I want that focus to be. Um, okay, now as our major class, we can choose what stat buffs we want to get. So primary and secondary here is referring to fortitude and willpower in this case. Uh, so we can choose either to add three to the primary, one to the secondary, or two to each. I'm going to go ahead and do two to each. So willpower and focus, I'm just going to do do toot. I'm sorry, willpower and fortitude, do two to each. Keep a little little note there for myself. Okay, uh, and then our toughness, our major class toughness is down here. That's a three. So all of these little sub bubbles you see here are just how the main things are calculated. So they're just for ease of note taking as we put our character together here so we don't forget anything or have to look it up later. Um, okay, so we recorded all of that. Let's get our level one features. So Necromancer's got a bunch. And again, I'm just going to create some quick notes for myself. Like, I don't need to write all of this down. I just need to know what this general gist is, and then I can come look it up when it becomes relevant for me. So I'm going to do Necromancer. Let 
Let's see. Animate undead. So this is explaining how they operate within a certain radius of me. Um, the font color is weird, and I'll fix that in a moment. Uh, they take turns uh, right after me, which is great. I can use an action to perceive through them. Uh, they follow instructions. What qualifies as like a corpse that I can raise. So, okay, so I'm gonna do animate undead. Uh, I get enthrallment slots, which tells me how many I can animate. Half my character level rounded down minimum one, so right now I just have one. And then my control radius. Which is... 10 feet times my character level. So right now that is 10 feet. However, let's scroll down because, so here's all my spells that I can cast as a necromancer, great. Uh, but let's scroll down to specializations. This only matters for your major class, right? Uh, so this is where a lot of your level up choices are going to be. Minor class and influence classes are simpler than your major class because they're just sort of supplementary to your major thing here. So at level one, I get intermediate spellcraft, so I get to choose two generic spells and necromatic prodigy. So I add 30 feet to my control radius and an additional enthrallment slot. So let's go ahead and do another enthrallment slot and we'll go ahead and change that to 40 feet on my control radius. Um, and then Intermediate Spellcraft. So I get two generic spells beyond just a Necromancer. So anyone, when you take a perk, you can scroll down on the perks page here. There's a lot of perks. They're all organized into different categories for what you're looking for. Some of them boost your stats. Some of them boost, you know, do different things. Like you can do extra turns, that kind of stuff. Generic spells are an option when you take perks, uh, but anyone can take these for the cost of a perk. So that's simple stuff like being able to send messages to your teammates or clean dirty things or, you know, thaw frozen things, that kind of deal. Um, let's do rituals. There's a lot of options. I think I'm gonna keep it simple and I'm gonna do Whisper. That costs one plus mana. And I'm not gonna record the whole thing right here because again, I can just pull it up when I need it or keep like a more dedicated spellcasting page if I really like to have things printed out. Um, and then we'll do Protection is a good one. And that is three mana and three sustaining. And I'm not gonna get into sustaining and casting and everything right now. Uh, basically, sustaining cost is like to keep a spell going for multiple turns. Um, okay, so that is our Necromancer. We have recorded what we need for the Necromancer. Fantastic. Let's do our minor class, and I think we're gonna go ahead with Blood Mage on that one. And this should go pretty fast here. So Blood Mage, let's see. Type is Mage. Let's go add one to our mana capacity. T uh, toughness is four. Might and Willpower. And Focus again. So my Necromancer Blood Mage has uh, some sort of magic wand or amulet or something that they're casting their stuff through. So that's a flavor thing for me as a player to come up with. Uh, be kind of cool. Like in some sort of underwater coral bone, whale bone thing would be neat. Um, let's do, so you can see I can add stat bonuses here less than my major class. Let's do one to each though, I think is gonna be a good call. So might and willpower, willpower, might. And then our influence class. Oh, I'm sorry. We need to get our level one feature. So 
Scroll down. Level one, blood tokens can be used to power blood mage spells. So whenever a creature within 10 feet of me gets a round of bleeding, I get a token. Bleeding equals plus one. <laughs> uh, blood tokens can be used to power my blood mage spells. Blood tokens expire after one minute. You cannot have more than two plus your character level of blood tokens at any given time. So right now I have two plus my character level of one, three maximum blood tokens. Neat. Um, and you can see if I scroll down here to the blood mage spells, all of these have this bonus thing where I can spend a token to do an extra thing. I can spend a token to do an extra thing. Um, so that's neat. Uh, specializations do not matter because this is my minor class, so I will not be uh, interacting with this list down here. But if I was a major class blood mage, I would have options, uh, all of these extra things as I level up here. So you can see how a necromancer blood mage versus a blood mage necromancer winds up with two pretty different classes. Um, the other thing to keep in mind with a uh, minor class, right, is all of these costs are doubled. Uh, so your major class, they're exactly as it says on the tin. Minor class, they're doubled. So instead of pit and prick costing one mana, this would cost two. Instead of two plus here, this would be four plus, uh, etc., etc. Uh, you do have the option as you level up. So let's look at our Necromancer again. At level four, I can select an ability from one of my other classes, minor or influence, and remove that multiplier. So you can pick things, like let's say I find a Blood Mage skill that I really like and I want it to be more accessible at lower levels uh, or for less cost. I can pick one and say at level four, hey, that has no cost multiplier on it anymore. Um, so that is kind of how that works together and how these classes sort of synergize as you level up and get better. Um, but for now, level one, we don't have that. So that is it for Blood Mage. Influence class, we're going to do a Plague Doctor. This is a Martial class, so we're going to do a plus one to our stamina capacity right here. Primary stat is Fortitude. Secondary stat is Precision. There is no spellcasting type because it is a martial class. Um, and our toughness rating doesn't matter. You can see there's no toughness slot here because only your major and minor class factor that in. Uh, so for our influence class, we're going to pick plus one to our primary or plus one to our secondary stat. Uh, fortitude is useful for all of my classes uh, just because it's a mana thing. So I'm going to do plus one to primary and add another one to fortitude. So before we've even assigned our stats, we've already got seven baked in as things that are being added. So that's great. Um, let's do Plague Doc, level one. So I have the following features. I uh, get a concoction. Um, number of concoctions equals half character level rounded down minimum one. So the concoctions, some classes have these like extra things that they get uh, thematically. So this is at the end of the page here. So we'll get to that in a moment, but I get one dose of it for now. And as I level up, it'll add more. I get my Corvid. Uh, which lets me remove poison counters. Reducing poison on myself. And then I get a critical effect. I'm actually going to put that in a separate category for me because I like to keep my critical effects separate. So Plague Doctor gets Noxious. Uh, so often these come from either classes or weapons will give you critical effects. So when you roll a critical hit, uh, you can pick a critical effect that applies in that scenario. So if I was swinging a sword and it inflicts bleeding, uh, in this case, if I roll a critical hit that would deal damage with an attack or spell, 
I may have the damage and inflict poison counters instead. If it already inflicted poison counters, add more. So I'm just going to write half damage to add 2d4 poison. Or 3d6 if poison attack. Great. Um, so if I get some more from my weapon choices, I'll add that to that little area right there. Lovely. Okay, so now I have done all of my class choice stuff. Pretty straightforward, right? Let's go back to our class creation page. Next thing, so we've already done all of this. We've already recorded our toughness. Let me go ahead and add Blood Mage here, so that's four. Uh, you don't get a lot of buffs for toughness. There are some rare like perks and stuff that you can do, so I'm gonna put a big old zero right there. So my toughness is seven, so here's what that means. Uh, toughness score seven. We look at these three little statements here. And that just replaces this heart icon. So 7 plus my character level is 8. So this is the death by many cuts rule. Every 8 points of damage I take in a single fight, every 8th point of damage I take, rather, uh, is an automatic roll in the affliction table. We've covered affliction tables and how damage works in Relic and other places. We're just filling out a character sheet right now. Uh, check out the... Relic in 60 seconds playlist if you want to kind of get a primer on that. There's also obviously the rules and everything. Um, if I take seven afflictions at once, I am incapacitated. And if I take, uh, always roll round down when doing fractions. So let's do, if I take three, half of my toughness plus zero at this point, uh, half my character level. I have three points of damage while I'm incapacitated. That will kill me, so that is a bad time. Um, this will go up as we level up, obviously, uh, because, yes, character level factors into all this stuff. Great. Um, okay, so that's our toughness. All right, so let's run through our list again. We've assigned our classes. We've recorded our toughness. We've gotten our buffs. We've gotten our buffs. Now, assigned core stat points. You get eight points to divide amongst our core stats here as we see fit, which will be added to these uh, tallies that we've already got, right? Uh, so, and just for the record, uh, underneath each of these kind of gives you a guide of like the kinds of checks in role playing or taking actions that these might factor into like what your GM is most likely to call for. So if I'm doing anything physical, might is probably going to be the thing if trying to hide or do sleight of hand or whatever. Precision. Um, and then here's like the big mechanical ones, like where it definitely comes up the most. So like most melee attacks use might, most ranged attacks use precision. That also helps my armor score. Locks and traps. Uh, to disarm or rearm or do anything, usually cleverness, etc., etc. Uh, willpower and fortitude both factor into mana, which is going to be important for this character. Might factors into stamina, so keep those in mind as well. Um, I don't need a ton of stamina. A little bit for my Plague Doctor is going to be good. So I'm going to go ahead and put two points here plus the one, so that'll be three total. Let me get my eraser out. All right, well, actually, let's do it this way. We'll keep that so we can keep track of how many we've added. So two. Uh, I've got six more. I'm going to do another two and two. So two, four, six. I've got eight total to play around with. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Precision, fortitude, willpower, might. Fortitude, willpower. Fortitude and willpower are looking pretty good. Uh, let's do one into precision. And one into knowledge. So that'll be two, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus the buffs we've already got there. So let's add all that up. Cleverness, we're gonna have a big old zero in. That just means untrained in relic. It doesn't add negative penalties or anything like that. Eraser, so that's gonna be a three might total. Woohoo! 
one knowledge, five willpower, and five fortitude. And that is going to get us to our final stats here. Great. All right, so those are my stats. Fantastic. Now we can start to fill in some of these other bubbles and everything. So our might is three. Half of that rounded down is going to be one. So I'm filling in my stamina over here. You can see might factors into that. Character level factors into that. So stamina capacity becomes character level plus might plus buffs. It's going to be five stamina capacity. That's how much stamina I have at the start of a round. Um, or at the start of an encounter, rather, that is my battery. Um, half of my might is one, half of my capacity rounded down is going to be two. I don't have any buffs to that. Uh, so that is three. So if I spend my five or spend any amount of that, I will regain three at the start of my turn. Anna, capacity, character level is one. My fortitude is five. My buffs work out to three, which is great. So five, six, seven, eight, nine mana capacity at level one was fantastic. Um, and then let's see here, halved rounded down is four. Willpower rounded down is two, halved, plus a buff is three. I'm sorry, a buff is another one. So that's two plus one is three, plus four is oftentimes seven. So again, here is my battery. That's how much mana I start with when I'm fully charged. If I spend that at the start of each turn, I'm gonna get seven back, which is great. That is a great ratio for a spellcaster. Uh, you're gonna really, I mean, well, what it means is you can really cut loose and then uh, get most of it back pretty quickly. Now, let's go down here. You've got major class spells, minor class spells, influence class spells. This one, doesn't matter because my spellcaster, oh, I'm sorry, my influence class is not a spellcaster, so that won't factor in. Uh, let's see. Primary stat, secondary stat, half character level is going to be zero for both of these for now because round down. So primary stat for my major class, we remember, was fortitude and my secondary was willpower. So fortitude is five and willpower is five. Great. Five and five. So my check target, if I want someone to resist a spell from my necromancer is going to be a 10 so that'll be like target must make a save against your check target that number is 10. my spell attacks is going to be d12 plus 5 to hit with necromancer spells i can even put a little note here if it's too hard to glance up and down really uh, that's probably unnecessary because i'm zooming in and out a lot here but this is a page in front of you so you, know, you can see the whole thing um, minor class blood mage might and willpower were our primary and secondary right so our might is three our willpower is five so three five no bonus yet so that is an eight plus three for our spell attacks with our blood mage spells now this half character level means that even if I never touch those stats again, this is a new thing for the version one build of the game, uh, every two levels I'm going to get an extra plus one onto my check targets there. So just keep that in mind when you level up, go through and buff your stamina, mana, and your check targets. Now, a couple other little bubbles to fill in and we are done. Melee weapon attacks are going to be might plus d12, so that's three. Precision, I only have one. This is not really a weapon-focused build. Um, passive detection is gonna be four plus one. I don't have any buffs to that, uh, so that is a five. So if something is hiding in the bushes and it rolled a four for stealth, I'm gonna see it automatically without having to make a roll for it. Uh, otherwise, if it's something sneakier and I wanna look for it, I gotta roll and find out if I find it. Uh, armor, so notice here, Basic armor for your character is your precision score plus your fortitude score with a maximum of three on both of these, right? So my fortitude is over three, so I'm just gonna put a three there. And then whatever equipment I find, my armor is going to add to that as well. So we'll do that in just a moment. At this point, we have filled out all of our character relevant stuff. Next thing we do is starting equipment. Now I will tell you uh, I am reworking the system as at the time I record this. By the time you see it, it might already be done. So let me show you what I mean very quickly. So I'm just working my way down the list here. The new way that this is going to work is that all of your classes 
just have starting equipment options built into the glass page. So this is the assassin here. This is the clothing you get. This is the melee weapons you can choose from. These are the range weapons you can choose from, etc., etc. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, the other thing I will point out is that uh, all of the classes are going to get these reference pages. So like here, if you're an assassin, this is your major class. You can download this file. And this is all the information for the major class assassin with the specialization choices and everything. So if you want to print off, you don't have to look at the web page. It's got all of the poisons. It's got all of the specialization choices. It's got all of the skills, all of your level one stuff. Every class is going to get one of these. That's major class. Here's the difference. Here's a minor class assassin. They don't have the specializations page and all of the math is already done. So you don't have to worry about doubling it. Um, same for influence, etc. All of that is coming for all of our classes. It's just taking, again, I'm a one-man team, so it takes a little time to work all that out, right? <laughs> um, Necromancer and Blood Mage don't have that yet. So eventually, we'll have starting equipment in your class. You don't have to worry about it. It'll look something like this. Right now, if you go to Character Creation Guide and you don't have that for the class you've chosen yet, you can scroll down here to the bottom and run through the starting equipment list here. You basically get a budget to spend in different categories, armor, weapons, etc. Um, this is a little bit clunky. It was a product of like our beta build where we didn't everything have everything worked out and etc. It still works perfectly fine. I'm just trying to streamline that for everybody. Um, so I will tell you that what's going to happen is effectively you get to choose a melee and ranged weapon and some armor um, and some gear and backpacks and stuff. Uh, so your gold and silver and copper will go in here. It'll be something like you get 400 copper and I don't know, like 30 silver and 10 gold, something like that. Uh, you don't start with platinum unless you're very rich. And then our weapons and armor come in down here. Uh, let's look at the weapons page real quick. I already clicked on it. It's under items and equipment up here as well. Uh, this is just broken up by category, small weapons, large weapons, um, etc. etc. Weapons can also have modifiers on them that give them different things and add a cost multiplier and that affects the rarity level. So level one characters will basically not be able to go above like a mundane type item if they start modifying stuff. But potentially you could do like a dagger with like a sharp modifier or something um, or a deadly modifier. Anyways, uh, my spellcaster does not have any weapons training perks at all, so these items with the training uh, tag underneath them are not going to be well suited. So I think what we'll do is just go ahead and pick a... These are medium weapons. We'll probably just go ahead and do a dagger. Uh, so... It's not really their deal. It's a five foot range. or throw up to 30 feet. And actually, I'm just gonna do this. Throw. Damage is 1d4 of slashing. Critical effect on the dagger is quick. do is write that up here in my other crit effects. You get a free extra attack when you crit with a dagger. Only with the dagger, mind you. Um, okay. So for example, if I rolled a critical hit with my dagger, I could either do the quick or I could do the noxious. I couldn't do both. I would have to pick one or take a fate point or whatever else. Um, special effects on that is precise. What that means is that I can choose to roll with my precision instead of my might. Weirdly, this class might is actually better. Uh, so I wouldn't really use that, but I could. Um, okay, so that's a dagger. Let's give ourselves a ranged weapon. It's gonna work basically the same way. Uh, we'll do... A hand crossbow is nice and thematic. Range is 50. 
damage is two flat piercing. And you will start with like a hundred bolts. So that'll be in the starting equipment section in your in your class page. Uh, da, 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 da. It does not have a critical effect. Crossbows typically don't, um, but they run higher in basic power. Uh, point blank is good. Um, there's no penalty if you use it right up next to somebody and then reload one. Which means that it takes an action to reload this after you use it before you can shoot it again. So, nice little holdout kind of Derringer type thing for my Necromancer. Who hopefully doesn't have a lot of people coming up to them. Uh, okay, hand crossbow and dagger. Great. Now let's pick some armor. Now once again, as we scroll through our armor here... You'll see some require training, some do not. We do not have any special armor training, so we will pick one that does not require it. Uh, for a necromancer as our primary build, your starting equipment will be tied to your major class, by the way, not your other classes. So as a necromancer as our primary build, I'll tell you that when I'm designing it, they're probably not gonna have heavy armor or anything like that. So let's say that they choose leather. Plus one armor, absorb one. Uh, the absorb property is a way to trade your armor rating to avoid hits. Uh, you can read all about that up here. I'm not gonna spend time on it right now, but leather armor also reduces slashing and piercing damage by one. to a minimum of one, mind you. So it doesn't completely stop all damage. Um, but that's good to, good to have on my sheet there. So, now we have our armor. Other armor adds one. So we find that my total armor score is a measly five, uh, which is not horrible, not awesome. This is a pretty glass cannon spellcaster wants to hide behind my horde of minions and uh, harvest what they're doing to power my blood magic is kind of how this one comes together. Um, oh, Plague Doctor Concoction we didn't actually do, so let's go ahead and scroll down real quick. So, Plague Doctors especially if they're the major class, wind up getting a ton of concoctions, which are special grenades that do different things, or you can drink them as potions, which do even more powerful things. Um, for a influence class plague doctor, you only get the one, so pick one that is fun for you, and just jot it down, and you get one dose of it at level one. Um, I believe that goes up over time. So you get one dose and then, you know, one recipe at level one and you get one dose to use it on. At higher levels, you might have more doses of the same recipe. You can also learn these through like role play if you do something cool and the GM wants to award you. I'm gonna do uh, Dr. Leopold's, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Doc Leo's uh, affectation alleviation. Uh, that is actually one that we created specifically for Ten Silver's Bent. Dr. Leo, character in that, played by uh, Mr. Jacob, did some really cool stuff, and I thought it deserved commemorating into the system. That is the benefit of uh, playing games on podcast with the creator of the system, because I can do things like that. <laughs> uh, Ten Silver's Bent turned out great. Episodes are coming out. You should check it out. But... Regardless of all of that, this is size character sheet. We are done. That wasn't too painful, right? So I was taking time and kind of explaining everything as I went here, but you can see once you sort of know what the flow is of all of that, this doesn't take that long. Um, and once you get all your stats and everything, you can kind of crunch all these numbers as you go pretty quickly. It's all on the sheet. You don't have to memorize stuff. That's, that's kind of the deal. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I'll leave you to it. Bye-bye.